we are proceeding through uh, through spring at a record pace. Um, it with snowed snow today yeah, with, with snow, snow, on snow on the ground on in Indiana. I could not believe it when I woke up this morning. I was like, yeah. "You've got to be kidding me!" It's and and it's going to be. Yeah, we're doing the weather report. We've kind of gotten used to doing that for people, so. Yeah. <laughs> No, we're no better at it in Indiana, we're, we're, right? And we're and we're no better at it than the, the meter, meteorologists. Yeah, so exactly, we can fail just like they do. So uh, I know we were talking the other day about uh, you know design team meetings, things like that. And um, I was curious as to what your thoughts are for those out there that are um, doing everything by themselves. They don't have a design team, smaller programs, um, but still you know, want to do what they can for their students and have the best design possible. What are some some things that come to mind for you? I, I've got a couple of things, but what, what are some things that come to mind for you that are important if you're going to be designing basically on your own or for lack of a better term, maybe using a can show of some sort? Yeah, and I, I've certainly done that, especially my first couple of years of teaching. Uh, I think in my first year, I I think I had a color guard instructor, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, but that was about it. Uh, so I was doing winds, I was doing percussion, um, doing the arrangements, obviously, uh, and it just seemed like I was doing everything. And I do remember that even though I was young, and I'll use that as an excuse, I really kind of over-programmed for my small band because I just thought that would be really cool to do this great, wonderful, hard show. And it really wasn't smart at all. So I, I, my biggest suggestion would be just to be realistic about what you have and not just being realistic about what you have, but the time you have with what you have. And uh, depending on your rehearsal schedule, making sure that um, there's gonna be plenty of opportunities for your kids to enjoy, uh, smile, <laughs> Make sure that they're going to have um, a great time putting it together, that they're going to have some opportunities to be successful in front of an audience, even if it's just in front of a football crowd. And uh, set the kids up for success, just like we talk about anything that we do. Um, give them a chance, you know, to really enjoy what they're doing and, and just don't overdo it. Make sure you know who you're writing for and um, just be kind of smart when it comes to planning. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I, I think that, uh, you know, we've talked before about, you know, can your students on that first or second read through basically play notes and rhythms of the program? You know, there's there's places obviously where you might have a technical challenge here or there. Is it within their reach? And are they at least reading through the moment? Um, if your kids are struggling to, to get through the first 20 measures of what you've written, then you probably have over programmed. And so and, and they're not going to enjoy the experience. So it's it's really, really important to be fairly calculative. And, and usually if you're young, um, take it back a few steps from what you think they can do and, and, and be conservative and just make sure you're, you know, you're creating moments for them that they can actually communicate to an audience. I think that's probably the most important thing because when it, you know, marching band, particularly if you're just doing a circuit, tends to be a relatively short season. If you're not doing the national contest like bands of america or u.s bands you know you're 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 able to kind of control your own destiny to some degree so it's i think it's important that you pace things through so that the students get a great experience and especially coming out of COVID, you know um, having them feel good about what they're doing is is a great recruiting tool absolutely and i think um also remember that if you have to make a choice between starting off simple and difficult i would certainly go the simple route because you can you can easily add things uh, as the season goes uh, if uh, your kids are playing pretty well and here's a moment in the show that you think is maybe a little bit dead you can add a cool lick you can add a cool moment musically um, and that makes it even that much more enjoyable for the kids uh, it's that's much more fun for them to deal with that than to deal with this segment that they've been working all season long that they just can't quite perform and they're just getting more and more frustrated. So uh, remember that um, maybe simple is better and then um, add some difficulty as you go when you see how your kids are doing. Yeah, absolutely. And the more time you can commit to your fundamentals program without having to teach notes and rhythms, the better off you're gonna be. 
and sound better, look better, because you're having time to spend or you're you're consciously taking the time, not that you shouldn't have the time, but you're consciously taking the time to, to be able to refine those performance skills because in the end, it's gonna come down to achievements. So great tips, Richard. Certainly appreciate the time this morning and we wish all of you the best as you continue your spring endeavors and continue your planning for your fall marching season. Take care, everybody.